All right, guys, today I'm taking you on a new adventure to Art Hive in Staunton, Virginia. These are just a few pictures I took on the inside of the store, but I will talk more in my regular video. I'm just showing you some of the, it's a really neat little store. I just wanted to show you a little bit of what the inside of the store looks like through these photographs. They have art from local artists, and they have lots of reused stuff, and I love this nutcracker. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host, Jennifer. I just had to re-record because I was having issues. <laughs> I was having issues. My camera wasn't focusing right. I'm trying to contact Lucas's former school. They're telling me he has overdue books. Uh, babe, he ain't been to your school all year. He ain't got nothing overdue. I'm sorry, he don't. <laughs> So they just contacted me back. Oh, we're sorry. We made a mistake. Well, I told you you made a mistake last week. They were arguing with me. Anyway, that's not why we're here today. That is nonsense. That is silliness. All right. I, I cannot hear on either ear today. I feel better than I did yesterday, though. So every little bit helps. <clears throat> I definitely feel a little bit better. It's just my ears are filled with fluid. <laughs> All right. So this weekend... We went to the store that you saw in the opening of this video. It's called Art Hive. And that's probably Mr. Cinnamon calling me, texting me back. And I'm going to shut the volume off because he's probably going to call. I really like that store. So I'm going to give you a little review. Then I'm going to show you what's in the bag of what I purchased at that store. Now, it's another creative reuse style store. And we've been to several on this channel. Uh, I've been to them mostly on the East Coast. Uh, I have shopped from other stores in Ann Arbor, Michigan. They have a Creative Reuse store. And I have thought about shopping at the Creative Reuse store, which I believe is in Seattle. But they are ridiculously overpriced. And I refuse to pay their prices for reuse items. I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> Says the girl that spent a hundred and some dollars on Buffalo Fluff at a Creative Reuse store. Yes, that was me last week. But they're charging, they're overcharging for like little stuff. So I, I just, I'm not interested in shopping at that creative reuse store. Now, I recently got, I went to uh, Valley Creative Reuse in Harrisonburg. And she's like, hey, we have a passport, which is kind of a cool idea. So the passport is a lot like a passport you would get for a yard crawl. Except it's a creative reuse crawl and there's not like a week limit on it. And you just go when you can. Apparently, there's nine creative reuse stores in the state of Virginia. I've been to several of them. I have now been to Art Hive, which I'm going to talk about in this video. I have been to 757 Creative in Norfolk. I have been to uh, Valley Creative Reuse in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Uh, Scrap RVA in Richmond, which I need to go to their new location still, get my pet support stamped because they are in a new location. I haven't been since they opened their new location. And I'm very much a mouth breather today, and I apologize for that. But I can't breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> At least I'm good at spirits, right? Um, this is just, it feels like it's a head cold. It's all in my head. I know I sound bad. I probably look bad. I look better than I did yesterday, though I got a little bit colored back. I was white yesterday, like white. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the store, I'm looking at the passport, and we, oh, and the Scrappy Elephant in Charlottesville I have been to as well. Now, when I went to the Scrappy Elephant this weekend, they were empty, but they had some sort of holiday market or something going on, so they were wiped clean. Like, they didn't have any yarn, the yarn bucket was empty. <laughs> It was a sad mess. They didn't have any fabric. It didn't look like, well, anything I was interested in. They always have stuff. But it wasn't anything I was even remotely interested in. But I got my passport stamped. And that's from, I think that's from Eat, Pray, Love. My passport. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's what that's from. My passport. Anyway. And, um. I was looking, I was like, well, while we're going to the Scrabby Elephant, this place is in Staunton. So we were taking my niece home to college in Harrisonburg. Okay, so we went up to Charlottesville, which is kind of out of the way. And then we went across, which is kind of towards Staunton. And I was like, I, Mr. Cinnamon's actually like, let's stop at that one. We'll have a good day. We'll have fun. So we stopped in. It's a cute little shop, as you saw at the beginning. I took a picture of the outside. One half of the store is the creative reuse stuff. 
So think craft thrift store. Okay, it's all like donation stuff. It's all reused stuff. It, they had a ton of yarn, like a ton. Um, and it was all in baskets, color coded, which I appreciate. I appreciate that so much. I hate digging through like wire racks. I hate digging through. I'd rather have it in smaller buckets, like separated out. It's just easier. I won't dig through a wire rack. Like even at Michael's, I will not dig through them wire racks and the balls get all tangled up. And oh, I hate that. It irritates me. <laughs> Some creative reuse stores have that. And that's all they can do right now, and I understand that. But I really like the way Art Hive had it in buckets. Another store that had it like that was um, Scrap Baltimore, which I will never return to. They had good yarn. The clientele there was ridiculous. I did a whole video on it. And as a matter of fact, the owner of Scrap Baltimore, <laughs> she left me mean comments using fake names for about six months after I made that video because I did not enjoy her store. And she just could not handle the truth of my, my video. <laughs> so I I had kept blocking her, blocking her, blocking her. Because she kept coming back with new names. But her names were not real creative. So I was able to actually follow her back to her Instagram and find her. <laughs> uh, that was funny. I didn't talk about that on the channel. But that, that's that's why we won't go back to Scrap Baltimore. Because that lady is petty. Also, I did not enjoy the experience in that store. It was very, um, they were rude. It was it was bad experience. But if you live near Baltimore and you love Scrap Baltimore, that's cool. I mean, good on you, mate. But, yeah, not not me. Not Cinema Stitches. <laughs> no way. Anyway, so one half is all the goodies. And another half is a whole different kind of goodies. So it's almost like a boutique on one side. And, and by boutique, I mean they have, like, beautiful things from local artists. So... Jewelry, which you'll see in the picture, you saw in the pictures. There's jewelry. There's like earrings. There's bracelets. There's keychains. There's stickers. There's artwork, like painting artwork. There's um, uh, sun catchers, but like, and I actually showed a picture to Juju because I have right outside here. I have a wind chime that I bought at uh, Natural Bridge, Virginia, and it is a a a hunk of wood like a branch. And from the branch is pieces of glass that are cut like colored leaves and they'll color the rainbow. And it's one of my favorite things I ever purchased. Well, Mr. Cinnamon bought it for me. It's one of my favorite things. It's beautiful. They had sun catchers like that. I was like, Juju, you need to make me one of these. Because I love this. It's my aesthetic. She's all, that is definitely your aesthetic. <laughs> it was a tree branch cut with like dangled jewelry beads on it. And I was just like, that is perfect. If Juju, like, did that up as her her wind chime. Not wind chime. I mean, it could be a wind chime. Of her um, sun catchers. That just would be gorgeous. And she could sell them for a pretty penny if she wanted. But she's not doing that right now. But I, I, was, I was so impressed with the store. They had couches in there for you to, like, come in and sit down and craft and enjoy a cup of coffee. And just, it was, like, everything all in one. So you had all the reused goodies. And they had everything from paint supplies to computer parts to um, yarn, fabric, thread, ribbons, buttons. I mean, everything on one side. Gift, bag, they, gift bags, like um, reused wrapping supplies. Um, the center had a table with like holiday Christmas type stuff. And I bought a Christmas ornament that I'm, you're not going to see because it's already on my tree. And then the other side is the boutique with the, the artist's makes in there. And it felt like just a boutique. It was It's just so cool. And then the front of the store in the other corner is like couches like you would find in a local yarn shop. Like a fancy LYS. And you can sit down and just enjoy like sit and craft. And then in the back of the store there may be a bit of classroom. I didn't go back that far there may have been a classroom because a lot of the creative reuse stores have classrooms and like um you can hold events and stuff at those places really cool store really cool store it is one of my favorite creative reuse stores i've ever been to and i will be going back i promise you <laughs> i spent a total of like 45 dollars and a big bag of stuff so now that i've told you my experience in the store oh i also love the drag queen nutcracker that i showed you a picture of at the beginning <coughs> They also had paintings and artwork on the wall. 
the guy who checked me out was super nice and he wasn't that much older than me <laughs> he was not that much older than me and he's he was going real slow checking me out and he, he looks at lucas he goes i'm sorry grandpa's taking a sweet time and i looked at him like, grandpa <laughs> like i mean maybe he's old enough to be lucas's grandpa but he didn't look much older than me maybe he was in his late 50 i mean technically he's old enough to be lucas's grandpa but I, it was just, <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> it was funny. I, I thought he was hilarious. The guy was cool. Um, there was a lot of art on the wall. There was a painting of Dr. Frankenfurter from uh, Rocky Horror. I just, the whole place was a, a whole vibe. You know, I just enjoyed it. I bought fabric that I don't need. Um, I have so much fabric. I want to make a stocking for Christmas, though, because for the past several years, I've been making knitted stockings. I, I'm Everyone in my family has one. I want to, this year, attempt to make stockings out of fabric, because I've been seeing them a lot on the internet. And also, I'm reading, um, I'm reading Stockings and Spells, currently, the new, well, it's not the new, it is one of the Knitting Vampire club series that we've talked about on the channel a lot lately i finally picked up stockings and spells it's book four in the series i have up to book seven and my niece asked me which book do i have up to because she wants to buy me more of the series <laughs> probably for christmas um i have really enjoyed the series a lot i'm on the fourth one i haven't been saving it because the last book i read was like early october i think and i was like okay the next one's christmas we're gonna wait till it's christmas and then i'm gonna read that book and they were talking about making the vampires were crochet or knitting they were crocheting they were knitting stockings and I, I was like they're selling the stockings in the market i don't sell my stuff very often like it's rare that i sell anything i don't make it for that purpose I don't want to turn that into a job as well because it will destroy my creativity. <coughs> but I really love the aesthetic of quilted things, of things that are made from fabric. I really like when you find at the thrift store those old Christmas trees that are sewed from fabric scraps. I love those. Those, You know what I'm talking about, the stuffed fabric Christmas trees. They're funky. I, I love those, and I never buy them because often they smell or they're stained or something, but I just want to make stuff like that, you know? So, I did buy fabric. We'll show that. And then we'll get into the yarn. Some of the fabric had prices on it. Some of it did not. And my receipt just, he added up and said fabric and then added that up. So, that, and that's fine. All right, so the fabric, I'm going to actually unroll this. I bought some little remnants. I mean, technically, these are probably all remnants. I also will tell you that I often will buy big pieces of fabric, and I will use it for a tablecloth. Because it's cheaper than buying a tablecloth. Um, so I bought this one. This is cute little red with teddy bears on it. And looks like holly berries. So, this was, like I said, this didn't have a price on it, and it's just a remnant. It's a yard by a foot. So, three feet by one foot. Then I bought this one, which was 75 cents. And this one's pretty. This one's red with uh, shiny gold. I don't know what you call that. Boxes. It's almost looking pink on camera, but it's red. It's red. Ooh, that's pretty. And this one is... Again, it's, these are just remnants. This is... This looks like a full yard. This looks like a full yard. <coughs> it actually might be bigger than a full yard, but it's a good sized piece. It's see-through, so I'm going to have to be careful what I use that for. But like I said, I use fabric for other things than just um, crochet. Like this would be a really pretty lots of things. 
<laughs> um, I was thinking a project bag, but I don't need any more project bags. I also will take fabric about this size. I have a shelf that used to be right here in videos and it's all open shelves and it's in my living room now. It holds the DVD player, the Xbox, all the movies, boxes with Lucas's cords. I mean, he's got so many cords. Cords and cords to everything. If I need a cord or a battery or a remote control to something, my 10 year old son knows where it's at and how to find it and what, what I need. Okay, he's a nerd like that. He has an entire box of cords <laughs> in my entertainment system that is, if I show you over here, so there's this shelf here. It came as a set with that. There were six pieces. I paid $35 and it's from Pottery Barn, I think. So it's piece, It's three pieces are stacked on each other. That I just showed you is three pieces stacked on each other. And um, it's opened all the time. Because it's just there's it's just shelving. I hate the way it looks. I hate the movies in there. I hate looking at the, the Xbox. I hate all that. So oftentimes I take something pretty for the holidays and I drape it over that and I decorate the top of it so that it's holiday decorated. And I have fabric for every holiday, so it's always got something pretty on it. So that's what some of this is actually for. You never have too much fabric, right? <laughs> and then this one didn't have a price on it. And this one is poinsettias. Now, I have a special affinity for poinsettias because me and Mr. Cinnamon got married at the Cross in Ventura County, California. And if you're in California, you know what a cross is. Um, there are crosses that were set up along the coast by Father Junipero Serra. And he was um, a missionary. And he was trying to bring... Um, people to Christ. So he set up crosses along the coast. There's a big wooden cross in certain cities across the coast of California. And one of them is in Ventura in Grant Park. That is where we got married at. And we had our reception at a place called Poinsettia Pavilion, which is also in Ventura, California. And so Poinsettia, I mean, it reminds me of Mr. Cinema's wedding, even though we got married in August on my birthday. So, this is really pretty. And this looks like it's probably a half. It's a yard wide, but it's like, it's like a half a yard um, that way. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And then I got this one for 50 cents. You can also, I don't know if you know this, you can wrap Christmas presents with you want to be kind to the environment you don't want to you have a lot of fabric laying around you don't want to buy extra wrapping paper you can wrap presents in fabric and then rewrap presents in fabric this is beautiful it's candy canes this is about the same size as that last one i just showed you Isn't that pretty it's like reusable wrapping paper and i love wrapping paper my face turned purple my camera was like, too much green, too much green. Let's turn her purple. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love Christmas. I really do. This one was $3.50. I just thought this was cool looking. Kind of reminds me of Tardis. $3.50. Sometimes I love that they tape them up like that because it keeps them neat and together and it's not all junky on the shelf <coughs> but sometimes certain stores will wrap them up and there'll be big giant cuts out of them or it'll be pieces that they tied up to and I can't see on that these all look like really great condition so this is holiday spirit styled by Jennifer Sampson for P&B textiles 100% cotton. And there's a lot here. This is folded quite a bit. So this is easily three yards wide. Easily three yards. For $3.50. And it's really pretty because it's not just Christmassy, it's got purple in there. Isn't that pretty? There's that. It's easily three yards. You can't beat a dollar a yard for this stuff. 
Like, tell me that wouldn't be beautiful on the Christmas table or any table. <clears throat> to find a place where it folded the best. <clears throat> then we have some more poinsettias. This was eight dollars. This one was eight and this one was five. And it feels like there's more in this one. And again, either one of these would be beautiful on the table. This is the eight dollar one. There's a lot here. A lot. Like it's folded and folded and folded. Isn't that pretty? This would be such a pretty bedspread. <laughs> or a comforter. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that. It's so pretty. I'm not going to unfold it all the way. Because it's folded over like five times. It's so thick. <clears throat> Same thing with this one. It's folded a bunch. I don't know why that one is $8 and this one is $5. But... And she had the Christmas fabric separated out in their own bucket, which I also appreciate because I hate digging for certain holidays. Like, I, if I want to look at Christmas, I only want to look at Christmas. I don't want to look at everything else and try to fish for Christmas. Um, that might be an ADHD thing or a gen thing, but I really just, I like it being separated by either color or holiday. Love that. Right, there's a lot of fabric here. A lot, a lot. There's more here than there was there. <clears throat> and I just think it's pretty as Christmas ornaments. Isn't that beautiful? It's actually the color, you could tell my camera is trying to shift it so it's not so green. But it's really pretty. And there is a ton here. There's a ton here. <clears throat> so, that's the fabric portion of what I purchased. Which all needs to be washed. And I can't tell you if any of these smell dingy or dusty because I can't smell anything at this point. But it didn't smell dingy or dusty. That was another thing about their store. A lot of times creative reuse stores because <clears throat> a lot of the stuff that gets donated is stuff that people have had hanging around their house for a while. And it's not being washed. And it smells like dust. M musty. Uh, sometimes it smells like mothballs. Sometimes it just smells like just dirt. Very rarely it will smell like cat pee for some reason. Um, Art Hive didn't smell bad at all in there. Like it smelled nice. Like it, it felt like I went into a boutique. But like their craft supplies were thrift stores. So like I really, really liked her store. I, I say her. I don't know that it's a her. I don't know who the owner was. I believe it was a her because that's... The guy that was um, helping me check out, just fold my bag over. The guy that was helping me check out <clears throat> said that he was asking her prices about stuff, so that's why I think it was, she was the owner. All right, and then I got yarn. This has a price tag of fifty cents on it, but I don't know if that's her price because he weighed everything. So let me pull up my receipt. <clears throat> Fabric is just let me pull out my receipt before I say anything out loud <coughs> it says fabric packaged five dollars which was one of them fabric package times two 25 cents each so the ones that weren't marked I'm guessing were 25 cents fabric package eight dollars fabric package 350 fabric package 75 cents fabric package 50 cents yarn is 50 cents an ounce there you have it. 50 cents an ounce for her yarn. So I had 9 ounces and 11 ounces and 14 ounces. And then I paid $5 for a Christmas ornament because it was beautiful and it's on my Christmas tree. Yeah. So there you have 50 cents an ounce. Love that. Okay, so <laughs> I found Unger. Now, if you have been around for any amount of time, you know that I love Unger, specifically the Unger. Oh my God, what is it called? I have a bunch of it somewhere. I don't know where I stashed it. And I made a blanket out of it. It looks like fake mohair. Why can't I think what it's called? 
Unger. That's not how you spell Unger. Fluffy. The Unger Fluffy. Okay. So she had Unger Heather Knit. And every time I see Unger, I'm in a... Oh, this doesn't say Unger. I thought this one was Unger. That says Jaeger. Irregardless, this looks like the Unger Fluffy. Except this is made with Avec Mohair. But this reminded me of the Unger Fluffy. And these kind of go together, so... The Unger Heather Knit is made in Belgium. I have a bunch of yarn from Belgium. I have been sent two amazing boxes from the same person from Belgium. I love yarn from anywhere else in the world. It makes me happy. Machine washable and dryable instructions on the reverse side. 100% acrylic. <clears throat> it's soft. Considering this is like from the 70s, it's soft. Like... A lot of acrylic from back in the day. You guys, a lot of you know. It was yuck. It was rough. <laughs> like, they were trying to make you feel like raw wool. It was grody. And this one is actually really soft. And I really like... I don't use neutrals, but I like this tan for some reason. And then when I saw this one, I thought it was Unger Fluffy. Because I saw this one said Unger. So I grabbed both of them. I didn't realize this is Jaeger Gabrielle. I actually have a niece named Gabrielle. Actually, I think it's Gabriella. Anyway, this has 15% mohair, 70% acrylic, 15% wool. And it's really soft and squishy. And it's pretty... It's looking more yellow on camera. It's a little more muted than what it's showing on camera. But it is. It's really cool. So, I got those two. Sorry, I had to pause to blow my nose. And then I know you guys are going to say this. Why did you buy brown? You hate brown. <laughs> I really, this yarn is soft. And you know what's crazy is there's a bunch of this yarn in here that I bought that was Big Lot yarn for a dollar. This Gala yarn has been sold by Premier Yarns in the past in um, um, sets of five for like five dollars. So the dollar price tag that is on here from Big Lot is normal for this type of yarn. But I've used this type of yarn, the Gala yarn, before. It's ridiculously soft. Like, it's really, really soft. And while I don't technically like brown, and I know that is really strange coming for me, I really thought this would make a beautiful hat. And the brown has, it almost looks like a purpley color wrapped with it. But it's just from a distance looks brown. I thought that would make a really nice men's hat. Or woman's hat. I mean, brown is neutral, right? This is just 100% acrylic. 50 grams each. Made in Turkey. Machine washable and dryable. So I got the two per or brown that she had. <coughs> These look like they're a three weight, though. It does not say... But that's, it's on the thin side of a three weight. It might even be sport weight. And I, I was telling Juju, I have seen Big Lot yarn in thrift stores plenty of times. I have never seen yarn at an actual Big Lot store. And I have looked. Never seen it at a Big Lot. Now, staying with the Gala yarns. They also had it in pink. And this one says that it is acrylic, polyester, and nylon. And once again, it's from Big Lots for a dollar. Machine washable and dryable, made in Turkey, 50 grams. I really, I love pink. In case you can't tell, I love pink. They had five of these, I think. So I got all five of them. Because they're so pretty. And I'm even thinking like the brown would go with the pink. I just think that would look really nice. But, isn't that pretty yarn? For... I would have paid a dollar for this, but didn't have to because it was 50 cents an ounce. And, yeah. Although, I guess I paid about a dollar each if I paid per ounce because these are 1.76 ounces. So technically, I paid just under a dollar each. I still got them at a discount, but aren't those pretty? And then I stayed with the pink and I saw these and felt these are ridiculously soft. The gala's real soft. <coughs> these were real soft 
And these are Loops and Thread Elegance. It's 160 yards. It's the color's Pink Lily. 100% acrylic. You tell you, this is my good eye. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> these are a three weight and they look about the same thickness as the brown and the pink I can't read the rest of what that says but it's really pretty and it's really silky soft like Karen Simply soft <clears throat> well wait folks there's more she had a comfy cotton blend a cotton candy blend and I have I have several of these uh, so um, these are just going to go to the stash. Maybe I'll actually use it this time, but this is the color pale pink. It's a lightweight number three. It's 52% cotton, 48%, no, 52% polyester, 48% cotton, 271 yards. It was on clearance for $4 at Joy Ann's, as my son calls it, Joy Ann's. It's got a blonde hair in it. That's not mine, but that's all right. And it says pale pink, which I don't think I have the pale pink. I have the white. And this is really, really pale pink. And then I got these two because I like the way they felt. Now this one is Red Heart Cutie Pie. And this is a three weight, but it's a three weight of blanket style yarn. So I'm guessing this is polyester. 100% polyester, machine wash warm, gentle cycle, tumble dry low. This is the color Splash. It's really soft and squishy, but it's got a little bit of the uh, microfiber feel where it's, um, it doesn't stick to your fingers like microfiber, but it just is, I don't know. And apparently at the bottom of my bag was some paper clips, which he thought I brought in and I did not. <laughs> at least he didn't charge me for the paper clips. Um, I didn't know they were in the bottom of the bag. And yeah, bought that one. And then last but not least, I got the crazy boucle. The cozy boucle from this is a Michaels yarn that was out, I think, last year. And this makes cute amigur amigurumis. It's got like the white fluff, but it's got like little like a thread with I have had yarn like this in the past, they made a caterpillar. And it was just, it was fun to work with for Amigurumi. It's a bulky six, super bulky six. It's color Circus. 164 yards. This would also make cute mittens. Made in China. China. Hand wash cold. Do not dry, do not, or dry flat. Do not bleach, dry flat, do not iron. So, not bad, right? That's a pretty good haul. I had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the store. And then after that, we went... Where did we go after we went here? <clears throat> oh, we went to Trader Joe's. Which I think I told you this already. I went to Trader Joe's. And... The bag's a little bit dusty. I, bought, I stocked up on some stuff that I needed. For the house. Like, their salsa is really good. I really like Trader Joe's salsa. Um, my family does not like really like, specifically Juju hates jarred salsa. She prefers homemade, which who doesn't? Homemade salsa is way better. It's fresher. It's oh, it's a lot of work though. Um, and in case you don't know, my children and my husband are Mexican. <laughs> no, they don't look it, but they're Mexican. And um, we use a lot of salsa in this house. A lot of hot sauce, salsa, sauces, like all of it. And I cook using salsa a lot because, I mean, it's easier to take a jar of green salsa and throw it in with some pork in the crock pot than to make, you know, chili verde from scratch. Everybody just come on in. <clears throat> so I will often buy the the salsas in the jar and use them for other things like cooking pork in the crock pot make chili verde or you know there's a lot of recipes you can use salsa in I sometimes will put salsa in my soups just for extra flavor and as vegetables so I mean it counts as a whole serving of vegetables <laughs> <coughs> so we went there we got some goodies and then uh, took my niece home 
But it was a really good day. I had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed Art Hive. So if you live anywhere near Staunton, Virginia, I mean, like, anywhere is worth the drive to go visit and just see what they got. The prices are really good. And they had a lot of stuff for gift giving, like unique gift giving. Um, not only can you go there to buy stuff for your art projects, like whatever you do, whatever art you're into, they have stuff for that. But they also have that whole side that's a boutique that you could buy handmade gifts from a local artist. I just think that's really cool. I just really liked her store a lot. And um, with that, I guess that's it for today. Um, I still plan on visiting and filling up my passport <laughs> with all the other stores. There's quite a few I haven't been to because I didn't realize there was nine. The last I checked, there was four Creative Reuse stores. And one of those four was closed down for COVID because that's the last time I checked. And there's nine and I can't believe that there's nine. Like, creative reuse stores are popping up everywhere. If you think you don't have one near you, go to Google <clears throat> and type in creative reuse store near me and see what's around you. Or just type creative reuse store in your state, uh, in the state name, like creative reuse Virginia. And a lot of times it'll pop up that way. That's how I found it. I've had several people say, we don't have one of those in California. And then I'm like, uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> Yeah, you do. And I show them the link to this one and that one and this one. Or um, the Scrap, S-C-R-A-P is abbreviated. The Scrap stores are a chain of creative reuse stores. I believe they started in, I want to say Seattle. It's, it, I think it's Seattle in that area. Portland, maybe. <clears throat> There's one in Ann Arbor, Michigan. There's one in Baltimore, there's one in Richmond, so Ann Arbor, Seattle, or Portland. I don't know which. I think it's Portland. I don't know where else the scrap ones are, but there's a lot of them. There's, like I said, there's nine here. I've been to one in Greensboro, which is, oh, it's mostly a thrift store, but they have a creative reuse section. What is the name of that store? Let me look it up. Greens Boro. Spell it right, Gen G's. Reconsidered Goods in Greensboro, North Carolina. I have been there too. And they got they have a lot of yarn and it's separated by color. <clears throat> Again, though, it's digging through, like, it's digging through. I don't like digging through. I'd rather pull a basket out and look through a basket. Uh, but not everybody can do that, and I understand that. But they had, I found a lot of good stuff at Reconsidered Goods. Um, they're all over the place. You just got to search for them. And I'm not afraid to drive, so I will very gladly drive up north because there's, like, four up north that I will drive to. I just won't go back to Scrap Baltimore. Not anytime soon. I mean, I... I it's funny because you can actually search that video out if you want to go search that out. I just gave my opinion in the video and she was so mad. She was so mad. And I even said the store was fine. The store itself was fine. It was clean. The lady that was working in the store was fine. It was just everyone in the store was so rude and like, I won't go back. And she was so mad that I said that. She was so mad. For six months, I kid you not. It was like every week she was coming back with a new name. And I knew it was her because I could trace her back to her, <laughs> her Instagram because she's not real smart at hiding herself. And it was just, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious. I just, I was like, babe, you're like, you're literally, the more you come back, the more money I'm making off of you being mad. <laughs> like, just go, go somewhere. Like, just be mad at me somewhere else. You're watching the video to comment. It's literally making me profit. And she just kept on and kept on and kept on and kept on and kept on. And six months. And I don't make videos like that very often. I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm not petty. I don't try to take any business down. I was just like, hey, this is, I won't go back because of X, Y, and Z. And oh, she was mad. Oh, <laughs> so, and whatever, whatever. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. <clears throat> I have no idea what we're planning for the rest of the week. I know we only have Thursday and Friday left at this point. I want to get started on the Buffalo soon. I want to wash it, but I, 
with me not feeling good. My back is still real sensitive. I gotta be careful what I'm doing. I'd really want to wash it and get that process started. Um, cause I really want to spin it. I want to play with that buffalo so bad. Maybe I'll try and wash it today, cause I have my bucket is empty and clean. I can try and wash it today, or at least like get some of the dirt out of it. And then I ordered myself some paddles to separate the the vegetation a little bit and clean up the and get all the fibers like brushed out because that buffalo i was pulling pieces off and it's so soft and luscious and i just want to play with it so bad i was actually looking up buffalo online and i found somebody who was selling clean fresh roving for 30 dollars an ounce and i was like oh it's so pretty do i need some more no because <laughs> that's expensive an ounce is not a whole lot but yeah um with that, I'm going to let you guys go, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Go check out Art Hive, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.